Welcome to the Milk Bottle e-commerce show, brought to you by Milk Bottle Labs, one of the world's top-rated accredited Shopify experts. The Irish-based Milk Bottle Labs team upgrade, migrate, manage and advise some of the highest performing Shopify stores worldwide. Founder Keith Matthews interviews merchants, developers, fellow agency owners and Shopify folk to share as many Shopify tips and tricks as possible. If you're planning on upgrading to Shopify 2.0 or migrating over to Shopify, reach out. Milk Bottle will help. This podcast is kindly supported by our favorite Shopify app. Rewind.io is the leading backup solution for Shopify. It's the cheapest insurance policy you'll ever get for your Shopify account and it's supporting data. Now over to Keith. Hey folks, welcome back to episode 102 and our first for 2024 for the Milk Bottle Labs e-commerce show. Today, I am delighted to chat to Harry Willis of Rello. Harry has previously launched and scaled the partner program for Blueprint SMS, which was acquired by the industry giant Clavio in 2022. Today, Harry is on the commercial side of Rello, an innovative company that has emerged from the talented team behind Blueprint. With a focus on both sales and partnerships, Harry's insights are invaluable for anybody looking to stay ahead in the rapidly evolving e-commerce landscape. Today, we'll focus on Rello and how it will help e-commerce business owners build repeat clients and maximize subscriptions on their e-commerce platform. Harry, how are you? I am very well, Keith. And uh, yeah, happy to be on with you. Great. Me. Great. The last time I was talking to you was 15 months ago, and I was jealous because you were at the Web Summit in Portugal, and uh, you were one of those cool dudes uh, taking a call from probably the canteen. From a huge warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you go That's this year? crazy thing. Did you go this year? Uh, I didn't go this year. It's so huge that the e-com part of it is relatively small compared to a lot of uh, conferences. So amazing as it is and amazing as it was for wandering around and seeing all sorts of crazy internet stuff. Yeah, I decided not to last year. But yeah, living in Lisbon, so I, I see it roll in every year and it's, it's very tempting. Yeah, it was in Dublin. The founder, would you believe, their office is quite close to where I live. Uh, they're based in Dublin and a few years ago they had massive problems, would you believe, with or they said they had massive problems with their internet connection. And uh, he caused a lot of, he likes a little bit of attention, this guy, but certainly he has created a massive show, probably similar to, what's the one in Vegas? Um, it's a, is it CES? Uh, a Shop Talk. Shop Talk, or, is oh, it? Oh, CES, or yeah, one of those. Yeah. Shop Talk's the big e-com one, I think. Yeah, okay. Well, look, it's 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 great to have you. The last time we spoke, you were involved in in, in Blueprint. Let's, let's just start, Harry. Just give everybody a synopsis on Rello, because I'm a little bit intrigued, because I know that it can help people increase repeat revenue, but also you don't necessarily have a subscription service in your store for, for you guys to help them. So just give yeah. us a, let, what, what exactly does Rello do? Rello is a repeat revenue platform built specifically for brands who sell replenishable products. So we don't work with a very wide range of businesses, but for brands who have replenishable products, we know that there's a very unique set of problems that they face. So we built this platform to basically look at your Shopify order history, which is usually a goldmine of data for brands, but they just don't really know how to process it, let alone get any of their learnings into Klaviyo, which is where it can actually be put into action to drive more repeat revenue. Um, so our platform will look at that order log and it will start to work out which day each customer is most likely to need to replenish, to cross sell or to convert onto a new subscription program. And once we have all those predictions, we push them into Klaviyo so you can basically start sending much better timed comms, which are all based on the data and they're different per person rather than just using one size fits all timings on your reminders to get people to repeat purchase or convert onto subscriptions. We started out as a team in a different life two or three years ago as Blueprint. We were a um, retention marketing solution, which was built around the SMS technology. I was brought on as the partnerships lead to basically start our agency partnerships program. Blueprint went on to be acquired by Clavio. We took the essence of what Blueprint was, which was this kind of retention marketing engine. And then we, yeah, we repackaged that as Rello and that's the, become the, the solution that you see today. So you guys must know the Clavio platform better than anybody. We do. We know it pretty well. Well, a lot of our work that we do is in implementing this tech then into Clavio. That's like a lot of our onboarding stuff. So we have Jordan and Joan who are in-house Clavio experts and uh, they are, are very, very skilled in Clavio, just especially, again, for those uh, kind of subscription growth and repeat purchase growth use cases. So you've mentioned two platforms. You've mentioned Clavio and you've mentioned Shopify. So is this only for Clavio and only for Shopify? 
Exactly right. Yeah. Okay. And then on the subscription side, we integrate with basically every single subscription platform. Um, our criteria is the platform just has to be one that uses the Shopify checkout. And that means whether you're using Recharge, Skio, Smarter, Stay AI, Order Groove, any of them we can basically integrate now with. So the, the conversations that I've had, Harry, in the past with customers about repeat revenue is a, is a relatively simple one. If, if you analyze your customer base and there is customers that are re- repeatedly buying, generally what will happen is the, the customer will add subscriptions and it, they will bo- try and board that customer uh, as a subscriber. But Rello does two things, doesn't it? It does that, but what it also does is it also increases the the repeat orders across those customers that are repeating without placing them on a subscription uh, subscription plan. So can you just give us the, the, the I suppose, the difference the, between those two? Obviously, there's a lot of similarities, but there is in certain parts of the world, there is still, you know, uh, not full acceptance of subscription offers on a site. So some people don't like subscription. Uh, some yeah. people will repeat by without ever subscribing to a subscription. So can you to start, can you just distinguish between those two fundamental types of customer. Yeah, definitely. So on the repeat purchase side, you will have the people who have just purchased from you once. When someone's just purchased from you once, what we will do is we will analyze every single other customer who's also purchased that specific product SKU. And we will try and work out statistically using averages when we think the second order is most likely to come. And that will then define when we send a reorder reminder out to that particular customer. As soon as that customer has purchased the second time, we then start to have a customer record about how you behave specifically as a customer. So as you then move on to purchase number three, we start to really dial into that customer record a lot more. Um, So it means we can start to build up a profile about how often Keith as a cus- as a repeat purchase customer tends to come back and order and as you order more times that starts to get more and more accurate just because we can start to to see that data for you specifically now what the algorithm will then do is once we've noticed that you've been purchasing regularly and we start to notice that you're also purchasing a product which is available for subscription, what we'll start doing is we'll start matching the subscription frequencies that you have on offer with the repeat purchase reorder timeframe at which you're coming back and just habitually repurchasing. So that's how we start to understand basically and it is a, it's a little more complex than that, but as a simplification, how much of a subscription opportunity you are. So there will come a time when we start to get a really high confidence that you're actually very well matched onto a subscription. That will then trigger an email or an SMS to you through Clavio that instead of being your normal reorder reminder, which has been coming through, this time it switches and says, hey, Keith, you seem to really love this product. We've noticed that you've ordered it a number of times. Have you considered putting this on autopilot to unlock yourself a 10% discount, for example, or whatever perks you're offering? When the customer clicks through, we then optimize the checkout so they can become a subscriber just in a couple of clicks. Importantly, within that process, they can also just toggle down onto a one-time purchase and just continue their voluntary repurchasing of the product. So we're not forcing the customer into a subscription at all, but the idea is we are just offering them a relevant subscription offer that they can take, which is matched with their actual historic purchasing of the product with the idea of just making that process as smooth and personalized for them as possible. Generally, the results of sending the reorder reminders at an increasingly more accurate time frame, and then sending that very contextual subscription message, we will increase the reorder rate um, from the replenishment flow somewhere between 20 to 40%, and we'll increase the um, new subscription growth by similar percentages as well within that subscription converter flow. So a, a store with no actual subscription service, you could push the results to, to, to nearly the same. Is that right? Yeah. So there's, um, if, if a brand doesn't offer subscriptions, but they do have a replenishable product, let's say like a coffee brand who's just strategically decided not to put a subscribe and save option on, we would just continually be uh, suggesting replenishment moments to the customer. However, we also have another product line, which is around cross-selling. So instead of encouraging them to purchase the same thing again, after a set time frame, what we would do is we would look at historic trends. So if you have purchased product A, we would look at every single other customer who's purchased product A to see what product B was if you went on to purchase something in the future. So we can start to uncover all the historic trends between your various different products that might otherwise just be sitting there hidden within your Shopify history. And we can start to then trigger additional flows within Clavio just around product suggestions. So instead of, hey, have you considered topping up this product? Maybe it would be, hey, have you considered trying this different coffee bean roast um, that you haven't tried before. Here is the recommendation, but also on the specific day when our algorithm believes you're most likely to want to convert onto that cross sell as well. 
Right. So you've, you've covered re- replenishment and you've covered cross-selling. In terms of subscription management, does your platform plug into the other the, the popular subscription applications and allow you to manage it? Is it? Could you just give us more detail on that? Yeah. So that specific integration that we have is for, for recharge. And basically what it allows you to do is three days before a subscription is renewing, there's a moment uh, in the, or there's an API call called the um, upcoming charge notification, which is usually used to send an email through recharge, which says, hey, your subscription's up for renewal. If you want to make any changes, click here. And it usually takes you to the recharge portal. Some challenges with the recharge portal sometimes are that people have to make a login. They have to enter their credentials, an email address, a password. And sometimes customers don't have those to hand. And it causes this churn moment where they just think, I just need to manage my subscription. I'm just going to send an email and cancel. So what the Relo integration will do is we allow you to send that email from within Klaviyo through Klaviyo transactional email. And we add a link to that email where it says, if you want to make any changes to your subscription, just click here. And it takes you into what we call the magic cart, um, which essentially allows customers to skip, pause, delay, swap a product in or out of their subscription, all without having to do any kind of login at all. Now, this means that customers start actively managing their subscription more. When they make more subscription management actions, the customer cancellations completely drop because obviously they're not having that frustration churn moment. Um, And then they can also add in additional one-time products in that process as well, which means you can actively increase the average order value of those subscribers as well. The reason that we haven't built that across all the other subscription providers is generally because a lot of them natively have no login subscription management actions (laughs) enabled already. But yeah, that's kind of summary of the work that we do there. Magic cart. Who came up with that name, Harry? It wasn't me. It was Harvey, <laughs> our, our founder, unfortunately. But you'd be amazed at how many names we went through. The magic card. It, it's, oh. it, it's, it's very powerful. You're describing something, you're describing it in layman's language, as they would say here. But I, I can assume that there is a lot of effort to get to that. So in terms of the boarding of a customer, if somebody signs up for that service, because there's load, a lot of Clavio customers and Shopify customers probably listen to this. Just, you know, you sign up. What's the process? There must be human intervention here. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're very, very hands-on with the setup. For all listeners of your podcast, we'd be very happy to offer a 30-day trial. Uh, and that also includes full setup service into Klaviyo. So the way that it works is generally a, a brand will um, share their scale with us in terms of the number of orders per month. And that means that we can come back to them with a post-trial pricing quote. And it also means we can make some estimations about how much of an impact we think we can have on their bottom line. And we set that as the target for the tr- trial. A brand then agrees to move on to a trial with us and instantly they grant us access to, to their Klaviyo and they also add our Shopify app so we can run their data analysis. From there, what we will do is our team then jump into the account. They look at how the existing flows are structured. Um, So they might be looking at the replenishment flow, for example, and they go and implement the Relo technology into there. For some flows, like a cross-sell flow, brands don't tend to have one set up. So we will repurpose the replenishment flow and we'll change the creative a little and we'll create a net new flow for them. Same usually goes for subscription conversion because most brands don't have anything particularly effective around growing their subscription within their Klaviyo flows. Um, so we'll set up all of this in a draft environment within Klaviyo for them. And then we book a call with them where we run them through the improvements that we've made. We run them through the reasoning why we think it's going to perform better. We agree on those revenue targets that we're gunning for by the end of the month. And uh, they give us a thumbs up and we set the trial live for 30 days from there. At the end of that 30-day trial period, we then present a report on a uh, comparison of where they were before and where they are now after 30 days of using the product. And they can then come to a decision about whether they want to move forward onto a paid plan, basically. We find that around 90% of the brands that move onto a trial end up uh, moving onto becoming clients of ours. And yeah, overall, I think once they are a client of ours, our, our retention rate is over 98%, I believe. What sort of brands would it not work with, Harry? Just anything outside of the of the replenishables space. So um, fashion, uh, brands who have high average order value products that people don't want to buy regularly. So the best way to think about Rello is 
does the product have a need to be replenished in a linear sense? Like, have you received uh, some protein that you just want to purchase again and you want to purchase again throughout the year? Like, that's the perfect type of brand for us to work with. Anything outside of that, like fashion, for example, fashion will have subscription plans sometimes, but they're more membership plans or there's not that need to repurchase the same T-shirt again and again and again, for example. So... Yeah, fashion is the one where sometimes we're thought of as a solution there that could help, but it's not really our, our wheelhouse. Anything where there is a direct uh, linear replenishment pattern going on, and that's our that's our bread and butter. So supplements, food and beverage, coffee, pets, health, these kind of brands. I'd say Fourth Glade Pet Food are a particularly interesting one. Um, our work with them was also picked up by Clavio, and uh, we can maybe share a, a link to that particular case study yeah, from Clavio no after this as well. But basically, yeah, they were struggling with growing their number of recharge subscribers. So they implemented our subscription converter flow and that subscription converter flow, which identifies those habitually repurchasing customers and prompts them to subscribe at the optimum moment that increased their uh, recharge monthly subscription growth by 25%. Um, so it's had a immediate, very marked impact on their customer lifetime value. So uh, yeah, that's probably the best one to point to. Other ones worth mentioning is also our work with Absolute Collagen, used a very similar product line to similar similar kind of results. And I can, I can share a link to that as well. But yeah, we have similar across across the coffee space as well. And um, so yeah, happy to share some more links after this. Perfect, listen, thanks for that. Just hold that thought and we will just listen to our sponsors for one sec. Rewind.io is the leading data backup solution for your Shopify store. Did you know that there is no way of recovering lost data in Shopify? If your store is gaining traction, you may have multiple staff or third-party developers entering your store. Mistakes can happen and data can be easily deleted. Rewind.io puts you in control of your data, allowing you to restore anything accidentally lost from a single image to an entire store. It acts as a pretty cheap insurance policy for your Shopify account. At Milk Bottle, we help clients reduce their business risk by installing Rewind in every single store before we make any changes. Get your first month for free by simply replying to your sign-up email. Are your subscriptions as popular as they were? Like there was an explosion there three or four years ago, probably prior to COVID and then obviously during COVID. Are they as popular as they always were? Or, you know, I know that in the States they're very popular. They're not particularly popular in Ireland. Uh, they're popular in the UK. But what's the state of the subscription industry right now? I would say they are. Uh, I think... The bigger picture thing is that cost of acquiring customers is going up and up. It has been for years and it's it's showing no signs of coming down. For many um, replenishables brands in the CPG or FMCG space, they are only profitable when a customer makes their third order or so. Um, so everything after that third order, they've just got to make sure they're ringing it for as much customer lifetime value as they possibly can. And usually the biggest impact to achieve that is going to be moving the customer onto a subscription where you've got maybe on average six or seven lifetime orders on average that the customer makes. I'd say they're still very popular. I think the challenge is that subscribe and save options are probably, uh, they've slightly been done now, uh, but I think the probably more interesting space is just within brands who are offering really specific perks to those subscribers. And then also there is an area that we don't really touch quite as much, which is the membership space of, yeah, being a member rather than a subscriber. And, and what that means is uh, obviously a little bit different in terms of strategy. Yeah, like providing the customer with some exclusivity based on, you know, maybe some content or... I think that yeah. uh, what I see is it's heavily discount driven. It, it's interesting. I'm subscribed to a couple of services. One of them is a, a local pharmacy for vitamins. And I mm. notice myself now that if I don't take the vitamin, I just keep pushing the order out. You know, I, I often wonder if everybody is given the, the ability to manage a subscription, which of course they should be. You know, I wonder, does it re reduce then the, the the ultimate number of orders per annum? And in in a lot of cases, I would say the fact that you can self-manage means the actual fact that the, 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 the actual store won't get that bump of numbers that they thought they would have got. Mm, yeah, definitely. No, it, that's a, a theme that we've heard and, and things that we've explored ourselves. Mark what that. you mentioned there is, is an interesting point uh, where... You're part of a subscription and you just have too much of the product at that particular time. And it just means you don't want to receive it that week. It doesn't mean you want to cancel. Yeah. Um, but that, in a way, is very symptomatic of you being on the wrong subscription frequency from that outset. Yeah. We've put a couple of, of steps in place. Firstly, we don't use the word skip within our, our magic cart uh, subscription what do, what management do, what, experience. What do you use? Uh, 
I believe it's change order date. Um, okay. And it's, it's rigidly set date-wise to act like a skip. So you can only choose, uh, it's as if you, you've skipped that particular month. But it's amazing just the semantics of that and the psychology around not necessarily encouraging that action, but just letting the customer know that it's on their terms. Also, back in the Blueprint days, we did quite a significant research piece into exactly that point you made around whether a actively managing subscriber is actually worth less than somebody who's just cancelled, for example, or worth more in terms of lifetime value. And we found that as customers make more what we defined as positive subscription engagements, so just managing something, it is there is a net benefit to that rather than them just ultimately jumping off. But obviously forecasting can be a little bit challenging because if you have a thousand subscription customers who are just skipping, 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 and then they do that until they ultimately just cancel, it's, uh, yeah, it's not ideal. But I think you can get around quite a lot of it through through the right kind of semantics and, and language. So one of the important things that we do is as somebody is repeat purchasing from you and we're starting to realize that they might be a subscription opportunity to match them onto one of your subscriptions, when we go through the checkout process with them, we highlight the frequency at which we suggest they move on to the subscription at. Um, so instead of just throwing them to a product page where suddenly they have to think, oh, do I want 30 pills every 90 days or do I want 90 pills every 30 days? Suddenly it's just highlighted and we have a tooltip that says, based on your purchase history, we recommend you move on to this specific subscription. Now that as a customer experience is just quite nice because it removes that friction but the bigger picture of that on your ultimately uh, on your cancellations is that when somebody is matched onto the right subscription that actually suits their usage of the product it just means naturally that there is less of an inclination to cancel in the future because there's less likelihood that you end up stockpiling the product and have that churn moment if that makes sense okay well i am stockpiling the product <laughs> Yeah. How much so, of it have you got? Too much. But yeah, I'll just challenge you on that, though, because, um, I mean, at the moment, for example, we're working with a very successful customer in Shopify and we are rebuilding their subscription subscription widget, I suppose, on the product page, whatever way you want to describe it. The reason I'm on that particular frequency is because there was only two frequencies offered to me, right? And the chances are the, the other one I know wasn't the right one. So let's let's just say, for example... Really, if the customer is savvy, they probably do know what they want, but maybe the choices that they get aren't good enough for the simple reason in terms of the UX on the page. If you give people, you know, six subscription options, you're going to confuse them. If you give them two, you're going to not give them enough and they, they might pick the wrong one. And of course, if you give them three and then you guys suggest the middle one or the bottom one or the top one, you're going to help. But there's a challenge there that can never really be fixed the customer nearly has to go through a few deliveries before they can work it out. Does that, does that make sense? Well, it depends if they've been replenishing the product already. Yeah. If they've purchased from you five times, you can make a pretty data-led decision. Uh, good about point, exactly good point, when. yeah. yeah. Um, however, if they are coming straight from an ad and it's all around subscriptions and they're just coming into you cold, yeah, it, it is very challenging. So that's why we always suggest that for brands who offer replenishment style subscriptions like a subscribe and save that there is always just sl that slow warming up of a customer of moving them on to repeat purchase three or four times just because you get a much they get accustomed to the products and you also get a lot of data that can match them onto relevant things um, but as you said i think ideally you have five or six subscription options and then you have a tool like Rello who can match people onto those options effectively uh, and then you kind of kill two birds with one stone in that way so all I've done is just proves that you're, that so, some sites need your product. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> Harry, that's fantastic. Listen, thanks for the insights. Be before we finish, have you any nice plans for 2024? We have uh, a couple of things on the product side, which uh, are coming. Namely, um, we're moving out into some additional flows, into more into the Welcome series within Clavio, more into Winback series within Clavio as well. So we've got a couple of betas which are running. And then also looking at perhaps diversifying some of the SMS channels that we're offering. So looking across Attentive, across PostScript, because of course there are many brands who use Clavio for their email. Uh, and then Clavio have a, a much improved SMS offering, which is getting really, really strong now. But there are some brands who, yeah, still still choosing to use Attentive or PostScript for various different reasons. So we're uh, diversifying a little there to to accommodate them as well. That's good. That's good. So SMS is still alive and well then, if that's the case. It is. And I believe it's just rolled out in Ireland, is it not? It has, yeah. We, we, we shared some uh, clients with Clavio for the test. So you couldn't expect the initial product to be as feature rich as the ones you mentioned there, like Attentive, because they're obviously 
focus on SMS, but um, it's much improved. Um, and yeah, absolutely, it's now rolled out in Ireland. Harry, thank you very, very much for your time. We will place the links to those uh, clients of yours that you shared um, and details of the trial as well in the show notes. And thank you very much for your time. Awesome. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for listening. All of our episodes are available on Apple, Spotify, iTunes and Google Podcasts. If you're an e-commerce professional with an exciting story to tell, reach out to the team on hello at milkbottlelabs.com. Until the next time, take care.